how do you repair an air conditioner? In today's video, we're gonna find out what's wrong with this air conditioning system, and I'm gonna show you how to repair it. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. We got a call, the air conditioner's not working. This is a package gas unit. How do we know? It's got a gas line, and right now, it feels like they're using the heat mode. So let's go inside and turn the thermostat to the cooling mode. The customer is using the heat mode right now because it's cold in the morning, it's warm during the day. Let's go ahead and push the mode button and select cooling, and then run the temperature down to, it's 72 in here, so let's just put it on 70. Now, let's go find out what's going on with the air conditioner. Well, it doesn't sound good. I can hear the compressor, but the fan is not spinning unless you forcefully spin the blade. I think I know what could be the problem. First step, let's disconnect the power. So we can either turn the breaker off or unplug the disconnect. Now I'm gonna use my drill, my 5 16 I'm gonna take all three of these panels off. Now we can see our compressor. We have our compressor section with our service access fittings so we can access the refrigeration system and look at the charge. We have our indoor blower section and you notice there's a dual capacitor. Well, this capacitor feeds that fan motor on top as well as our compressor. Then we've got our electrical component section with our contactor that feeds power to both the compressor and the fan and then down below it, we've got our gas furnace section right here. Now, we're gonna take this piece off right here, which is our grill for our fan and also our fan mount. So we're gonna take these screws out and take a look at the bearings on this fan motor. So what could be wrong with this fan motor? One, the capacitor that powers the fan motor could be bad or faulty. Two, the fan motor could not have power. Maybe it's a bad contactor but we know that it ran. So it can't be that it doesn't have power. It could be that the bearings are bad. How do we check the bearings? We take the shaft and not up and down, but side to side. If you hear a clanking or you feel some room, that could indicate there's bad bearings. Also check and see if there's oil around uh, the shaft of the motor. Maybe if it's leaking oil, that could be an indication that we have a bad fan motor. Since I don't see bearings that are bad and it easily spins, I think our problem could be a capacitor. So let's check that next. Here are the three wires that come from the outdoor fan motor and lead down into the compressor section. We have our black wire, which is one side of the line. We have our purple wire, which is our another side of our line. So we have hot and common. And then we have our brown wire, which goes to our capacitor. Here's a dual capacitor that feeds not only the compressor, but the fan. And you can see there's Herm, and then there is fan. And then on this terminal, it's labeled C. You might not be able to see it, but that's what it's labeled. In between C and H is what we use to power our compressor. In between C and F is what we use to power our fan. And it's really not there to power it, it's really there to help it run. And that's why this is called a run capacitor. Now, how do we check the section of this capacitor that is used to help our fan motor run? Well, we take the brown wire that goes to the fan terminal off, and then we take all the wires off of the common terminal, like this. Our purple wire from our fan went to the comm terminal. Our brown wire from the fan went to the fan terminal. Now we're gonna take our meter and we're gonna turn the dial to MFD. MFD, like this. Now that we've got it on MFD, now we're gonna take one lead and put it to the C terminal and then one lead and put it to the fan terminal. And we'll be able to check the MFD. Right now it says it's 4.940. It's rated for five and it's not reading exactly five, so we can consider this capacitor bad. However, with that much of a reading, we might actually have a bad fan motor. 
So we're gonna replace this 35 plus five dual capacitor, and then we're gonna put the screws back in to hold the fan to the top, and then we're gonna retest and see if that fan motor runs and check the amp draw. I'm in the parts room where we keep a lot of parts in stock, like contactors, like transformers. I keep capacitors, run capacitors, from sizes four MFD all the way up to 80. So what are we looking for? We're looking for this one right here. This is our 35 plus five 440 VAC. Looks like that. Now we're gonna test the new capacitor before we install it. So we're gonna go from C to F and it's reading five, what it should read. If we go to C to H, it should be reading 35. Look at that, 36. So we're in good shape. Now we're gonna take and wire it up. We got our two orange wires going to our Herm terminal, our fan wire, brown wire going to the fan terminal, and then we've got our common, our red and our purple. Now I'm gonna leave this hanging for just a minute. Definitely wanna strap that before you leave. Make sure you have some metal strapping in your truck uh, or your service van. Let's go ahead and put those screws in for the fan motor to be in place and then plug in the disconnect. Plugging in the disconnect. Now, instead of waiting for the thermostat to go through the five minute delay, I'm gonna jump out the cooling operation or the cooling mode by taking the yellow wire and connecting it with a red wire or connecting R to Y. The fan motor is running. So the capacitor was the problem. However, we could have a bad fan motor or the fan motor could be going bad. I have changed capacitors and then had to come back and replace the fan motor. If you feel the fan motor has a chance of going out after you leave, go ahead and replace it or at least admonish the customer and write it on your ticket. Now, let's check the amp that we should have and then we're gonna measure with our meter. Let's take a look at the service facts and see what our amp draw should be. So if you take a look at the model number, this is a 3024. So it's a 24,000 BTU unit. So it is two tons. Then we go down, 2007 was the manufacture date. And then all the way down here where it says condenser, right? It's single phase, 60 Hertz, full load amp should be 0.5. So we're gonna take our meter, and if we have anything over that, that's an indication our fan motor could be faulty. It's 1 12th horsepower. So if we decide to replace it, we have to go with something that matches that horsepower. Now we're gonna take our meter, we're gonna put it on AAC, we're gonna hit the select button, and then we're gonna take one of our fan wires, the common right here, that purple wire, and looks like it is measuring 0.37. So that is underneath our full load amp. So then we're gonna to go to the black wire, measure it, maybe a little higher, 0.42. All right, so bearings, not bad. Amp draw, not over our full load amp. I think that we're good. We need to strap our capacitor and this unit needs a major cleaning. So if you wanna learn how to clean an air conditioner, I'm gonna put a link to a video down below so you can go check that out and learn more. Now, we're gonna do some schematic reading and I'm gonna show you some of the common problems that we may have in the field and then we'll wrap this up. Let's do a little schematic reading. Let's find that outdoor fan motor on the schematics, the capacitor, and then talk about where the power comes from. All right, so you can see we've got a few motors right here. We got the inducer motor, which is used for heating. We got the outdoor fan motor, which is what we just finished checking. And we got our compressor. Now, if you look at the outdoor fan motor, we got a black, a brown, and a purple. If you follow the black back, it goes to the line side of the contactor. That's the incoming power side. Then we go back here to where the purple wire is. It connects to the C terminal, which was the terminal that had the red and the purple. This right here is our capacitor, our run capacitor. If we go back and we find the brown, brown goes over to the dual capacitor and lands on the terminal labeled fan. So where do we get our power? So the black 
is one side of the line that comes from the contactor. And then if we follow the purple, it connects to a red wire. And that red wire goes to the other side of the contactor on the load side. So if we have power to the unit, one side of the line is always hot for the fan. And then when the contactor closes, we get the other side of the line. And this is what energizes that fan motor. And then we've got our, of course, brown that goes to the fan terminal of that capacitor. Knowing how to read schematics makes it super simple for you in the field to know where everything is going. We're back in the parts room. I'm gonna show you a couple different types of motors, the differences. Then we're gonna look at motors we keep in stock here to make sure the customer has what they need. So this is the first motor. This would be an outdoor fan motor, and this is a closed type motor. And you can see the only holes are on the bottom. So if the motor's mounted like this, there's no way for water to get in that motor. You would never wanna see a motor like this installed outdoors. This is an open type motor. And you can see there's holes not only on the bottom, on the side, on the top. This would be installed in a gas furnace maybe, or an air handler. And this right here is an indoor fan motor. So we have a closed type condenser fan motor. We have an open type indoor motor. Here are a few motors that we keep in stock. So first we have our closed type condenser fan motor. This is 208, 230 volt. Then we have our 115 volt furnace blower motors. Those are going to be your open type. Then I don't know what happened to this box, but this is our 230 volt, 208 open type motor. So you'd install the 115 on a furnace, you'd install the 230 on an air handler, maybe a heat pump, and then back to this motor, it's just, it's your outdoor fan motor. So it's closed type. So open type, open type, closed type. Then we make sure we keep a couple universal ECM motors, and these are the motors that we use. Super nice. I'll take a moment, I'll just glide over these boxes, that way you can actually see the numbers. Now let's go ahead and check the charge and then we'll stop and talk about most common problems I find. So we're gonna take our caps off of our service access fittings for the suction line and the discharge line. Suction line is the inlet pipe for the compressor. Hooking our low side blue hose to this. And then we're gonna hook up our high side red hose to the discharge line, which is the outlet pipe for the compressor. This is a reciprocating compressor, which you don't commonly see anymore. Everything has gone to either scroll or rotary. So we got our gauges hooked up. Now I'm going to take and connect my pipe temperature clamps. This one's going to go on the suction line and this one, you can't really see it, but it's going to go on the liquid line. And what are we gonna get? We're gonna get the superheat and subcooling values. If you don't know how to charge an air conditioner, I'm gonna put a link right here and a link down in the description so you can learn more about not only superheat and subcooling, but how to charge an air conditioner. What are the most common problems I find in the field? This has to be number one. This was the bad capacitor for this equipment. And although it doesn't look bad, you could tell by the MFD reading that we got that it was bad. But there are some noticeable signs from capacitors going bad. Look at the top of this and how it looks like it is exploded or rounded. This is a sign that your capacitor is bad. If you find one in the field like this, don't even bother using your meter, just replace it. Now, what's next? Second on the list has got to be bad contactor. Contactor has a plunger and it pulls in. And when it pulls in, it connects the two sides, so it allows power to go through it. Now, there are contacts, and those contacts can become pitted. So if you take the cover off of a contactor and you see some black substance on those contacts, you may have a contactor 
that could be posing a problem or causing a problem later on down the road, go ahead and replace that contactor. That is a problem that I find in the field quite often. Capacitor, contactor. Now this is a problem that's not seen as much as capacitor and contactor, but you do have bad disconnects. And you can see this is a disconnect, non-fuse 60 amp. And if you take a look, look at that. See all those, uh, that discoloration? You see this side? Nice, clean, and then this side. What can happen is there can be a loose connection inside of a disconnect. You can't really see it, but there's discoloration right here. And that can cause heat to build up. And whenever you get that heat build up, then you can have a malfunction. So a disconnect could be the problem as well. And what will happen is you'll have power going to the disconnect, but no power going to the unit. You may have a disconnect that's fused. And if you do, your fuses could be bad. If you don't know how to check the fuses, you take your meter, put the dial on ohms, and then measure across the fuse. If you read continuity, your fuse is good. If you read OL, your fuse could be bad. So if you have power going to your disconnect, but not from your disconnect to the unit, you could have a bad fuse. If you see a start capacitor like this one right here that's used to start the compressor and it's got this substance leaking out of it, that's an indication that that start capacitor is bad. Take your meter, read the MFD, look at the rating. If it doesn't match up, replace that start capacitor. A few other problems that you can find in the field is bad thermostat, bad thermostat wire, bad fan motor, a refrigerant leak, bad compressor, these are just a few common problems. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos in the field as a technician to help you be a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.